<laughs> well, Coach, what are your impressions here? We've had, uh, what, three practices now? What are your overall thoughts that you've seen? I think it's uh, really good. I mean, what we're seeing is guys flying around, being more conscious of uh, pursuing the ball, turnovers, and then being in position to, 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 to make plays and tackling. Um, and then it's great to see our mid-year guys, too, run, you know, run around out there with um, Kayvon, Gmon, um, Drew, those guys. So um, I'm excited, you know, just, just day three, you know, going through here. And then, is it day three? Yeah. yeah, day three. That's right, day three. It's like Groundhog's Day to me. <laughs> but uh, day three, so a um, couple more, and then uh, we'll get a break. And so that way the guys can come back and put it together, and we'll reinstall again. What are some of the things you look for in the spring? Well, this is a big time where you want to develop the, the techniques and the fundamentals and create good habits. So particularly with the uh, defensive side of the ball, like we're training these guys, right, to, to make sure like the cycle of a snap, get the call, okay, then we got to get aligned, and then we got to execute our assignment, all right? And then with that, we got to make sure that we're pursuing to the ball, okay, and then finishing in good position, and then we got to do it all over again. But you mentioned Kayvon, you know, Gmon and Drew and those guys. How are the newcomers looking to you at this point? You know, I, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm staring at the safeties a lot, but uh, Kayvon showed up today. You know, uh, he forced a fumble out there. Um, Gmon, Drew, I've noticed Drew's effort, you know, um, with him running around because he can run. Uh, I, that was Drew. Gmon, uh, Gmon, Gmon's trying to figure it out, you know, because, you know, it's all new. You know, a lot of this stuff is new to those guys. But um, I think I think it's great when anytime we can get guys in mid-year so they can get acclimatized a little bit faster so it's not all hitting them in the fall. Keith, when, when Oregon and, and Levitt parted ways, was there a part of you that wanted to be the defensive coordinator? Absolutely. Yeah, that's my goal. You know, I definitely want to be a defensive coordinator. And um, I, I obviously it didn't happen this time around, but I'm confident that uh, I'll get my time. And um, I'm excited for our program. You know, I've known Andy for a long time. We've crossed over in recruiting and um, was happy for him to come in and do it um, and happy for him, you know, once he got it. Uh, I was, you know, I was, you know, a little disappointed, to be honest, in myself. But um, this is a team, you know. Um, this is a team, and Coach Cristobal did what was best. So we got great defense coaches on, a, on our side of the ball, and uh, I'm excited for the direction that we're going. Mario said, you know, one thing he thinks that Andy can bring to the table is connecting the front end of the defense to the back. Uh, do you sense that that chemistry between the defensive coaches is, is going to be there? I think, uh, I think everything that we've done has done just that. And um, like I said, I, I've known Andy for a long time, and he was a guy that I, I leaned on, you know. Um, so with that, you know, I'm, it's, it's going to connect the front end, the back end, and I, I feel like everything we're doing is complimentary, and it's going to work out just great. So I'm excited for where we're going. Coach, in terms of the safety group itself, what steps has, has the group made forward that you've seen so far versus last year? Oh, OK. You know, uh, it's only three practices, yeah. so we still got a long way to go. But what I'm seeing is, you know, other guys like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to speak just on the safety, but like Verone McKinley, yeah. you know, because replacing Ugo, I mean, he did a lot of great things for our program. So Verone McKinley's playing in that nickel spot, and he's got off to a good start. Um, you're seeing Brady Breeze now at the boundary safety spot, okay, making some plays there and just making some calls. He had a great interception today in uh, one-on-ones. Um, you're seeing uh, Javon and Nick, those guys carry on over and being more uh, uh, communicating a lot more. And it's good that they're picking up the scheme because we had to do we had to do adjust a little bit on some words. Um, Steve Stevens is out there and he's getting it too. And along with Billy Gibson, you know, they still got a little bit more work to do. But it's just for the older guys or the guys who got the experience is that carry over and them communicating a little bit more. And then for the other guys, just them picking it up and then, you know, just kind of almost like a plug and play. But I'm, I'm really excited about Verone and some of the things that he's done, you know, kind of trying to fill those shoes of Ugo. How much different is <clears throat> what Andy's doing compared to Jim in terms of the scheme? Is it a lot for these guys to learn, or is it subtle things? Uh, I think it's uh, so much right now, it's, uh, it's a little bit of both, you know, back and forth with both. You know, and, uh, you know, Coach Dante Williams does a really good job. I, I, <laughs> making... got, I got a question for you. I got a question. I got a question. How is it like working with Dante Williams? How, how is that? Well, see, working with Dante, we go way back, okay, from Washington. Uh, and then we parted ways a little bit. And then I had to get him back here on my side because we are a great tandem together. So I love it. <laughs> but um, you got to remind me of my question. Your question. I'm sorry. The whole studs <laughs> position and how much different is it from yes. what Jim was doing? Okay, it, uh, it's a little bit different, but you know we had to. We we're going to carry over some words because what we wanted to do is make sure this was a smooth transition, so guys can translate those same concepts and know what they are. So in that respect, you know some things are going to change, and some things we try to carry over so that way they'll have some familiarity. And who do you expect 
to replace Ugo in terms of leadership? You know, that's something that we got to keep developing and keep, you know, keep pushing guys. We can't push it on any particular one person, um, but we got to demand it out of those guys. So, you know, hopefully by fall, somebody will come out, you know, with that, you know, because it still is going to take a lot of process and work through that all the way through this spring, all the summer, and then leading into the fall. Is he a great example? Because his first few years, you know, he wasn't the player he became of just stressing that developmental angle to some of these guys. Absolutely. You know, you know, because he was a corner and played some nickel, and we had him at safety, and then he was doing both safety. And then I, I just think it was a great accomplishment by him winning that Lombardi Award and everything that that thing stands for, um, everything that Ugo's been through, and then soaking in and being a sponge of all the teaching and everybody was pouring into him. Um, but you're exactly right. That development and that perseverance to keep just working and doing what the coaches ask you to do, then you know you, you could end up in that position just like Ugo. Speaking of Ugo, tomorrow's tomorrow's pro day. Uh, what, what, have have the guys been coming to you, Stigel, for advice? You got some defensive guys uh, performing tomorrow. What, what's what's your advice to them as they get ready to make that next step? You know, um, he, he was coming to me for advice. You know, when he was meeting uh, during the uh, the combine and you know talking about you know the just you know the defense and stuff. So I'm still coaching him in that way. Um, but right now, you know, it's just about him being himself. And, and uh, you know, he performed at the combine. I'm not sure what drills he's going to do tomorrow, but he just has to go out there and just be himself and just play and make plays. Where if, he's, if he's doing a, a drill for a team, just go out there and do what he's always done. No, you're depth, late. You're depth, too late. Uh, yeah. <laughs> depth chart wise, who's third at both corner and safety for you right now? Third. I think this is an organizational chart, and I moved it around quite a bit. So, um, you know, at the corner spot, I think Coach Dante's moved that around a little bit because now we got Daywood Davis over there. Um, we've had Dexter Myers in that a little bit. Um, and at the safeties, it's been a kind of a rotation because I had Steve Stevens, Luke Nolan, uh, Billy Gibson. Uh, Brady has bounced back and forth a little bit, but he jumped up with the twos. So, you know, but it's an organizational chart. We're just trying to find out that best, best mix and uh, you know that, that group that's going to gel together with the first team, and then we'll start you know, putting that second, third team together. Even when you've got signees coming in later in the summer and stuff, do you, do you want to see could those guys? Because clearly the starters are returning. You have some answers there. You know what you have to work with. But do you want to see that next line really progress here over these next few weeks? Because you know, and you get you don't necessarily have to count on freshmen immediately to be immediate contributors necessarily. Yeah, I mean, you know, in a perfect world, you would hope that you wouldn't have to count on freshmen. But at the same time, you know, we're going to give those guys an opportunity to come out here and earn it, and then see what they can do to contribute. Um, so, you know, with uh, Michael, that's going to end up being here, and Jamal and Triquez soon coming too, you know, we're going to give those guys an opportunity to play. Now, if we're at a level where, you know, we're playing and then we won't have to use those guys or those guys aren't ready, then, you know, Coach Crystal Ball will instruct us on what we need to do there defensively with those guys. But um, we're going we're gonna to encourage those guys to come in and be ready to play.